What's up guys and gals? Today we're going to show you how to break down, service, and reassemble a Penn Spin Fisher 6 7500 with some tips and tricks along the way. I'm going to start by taking the spool off. By undoing that knob, you just pull it straight up. To access the drags, we're going to open or remove that clip that's inside there. I look for the opening part, which is around here. Stick your screwdriver inside, in and up. Keep your finger around it so it doesn't go shooting somewhere on you. And these are the drags. And that's the layout. On the bottom you have the clicker. You can undo that screw there to remove it. Kind of keep your hand around here just so it doesn't uh, shoot out on you. Pull that up. Pieces you're going to see here are the screw with the washer built in. A bushing on the bottom that the click tongue sits on and a spring that goes inside the click tongue. For the drags to clean them off what I would use would be something to the effect of brake cleaner fluid. This is the brand that I use but you can use any one that you want. Just kind of spray it on there let it work its magic and then kind of rub it off and let it dry before applying any kind of grease or putting it back in the reel. Now we're going to access the rotor I'm going to rotate this reel until it gets down towards the bottom there like that. Pop the handle off. Now we can undo those four screws on the outside. There's also one on the bottom for a rope card which is a smaller screw. All these screws will be the same size. Just note that when you're opening this side cover up, I'll be a little bit careful because there is an, a gasket that's under there. So if you have to stick something in there to get to get to that or to this piece right here, then just be aware of it. All right, so now we have a couple of screws here that we have to remove to get that that shaft taken out so we can access this. Now we can pull that shaft out. And before any further, let me show you what's on the shaft. There's a couple pieces here that you may need to take note of. You have a gasket or an O-ring right there, and you also have a washer that's underneath it. Uh, I probably won't end up removing this. This is the washer here, this is the gasket. All right, so now we can pull this main gear out. And now we can take this block out as well. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the crosswind gear in because I need to unscrew that to get it out of there. And I'm trying to work on this first. To get to the rudder, we're going to remove those three screws at the top. Now we can undo that nut by going counterclockwise or backwards. On there, you're going to find a bushing and you're also going to find an O-ring. And I will remove these because I want to kind of do some things when I get back to it. And rock as you pull up to get it off and now we're going to do the bail wire and spring area to access that we're going to undo a few screws both these screws you see me working on right now are the same size can pull that off. You can turn that sideways like that and pull it off. I'm going to hold my finger over the bail arm so it doesn't shoot up on me. Uh, in general these the spring on there doesn't really go anywhere but just in case. So I'm going to kind of gently, that was not very gentle, I apologize. I was gently lifting that up so I could release the pressure that's on that spring. Which I didn't do a good job of but like I showed you it doesn't really go anywhere when you do that now let's undo this get the cover off so you can see what's under this cover 
you have that screw, you have the spring, that arm, or pivot, and this bales, this bale trip that does not trip the bale. Because there's no auto bale trip on this on this reel. Last part we can do here will be the uh, the line roller by unscrewing this screw right there. Try to keep that separate. What you have is let's get this out of the way. You have the bail arm, that screw, have a collar or a washer that's on there. You have your line roller with a bearing inside of it. The line roller will be looking like that with that sloped end or larger end facing the bail wire. Then you have a bushing on this side. And that's how that looks. All right, so we're gonna start with the housing on this side, which is the side cover. Remove those three screws that are on top to get the bearing out. These two washers you see here come off the main gear. And when you're doing these screws here, you wanna push down quite mightily just to make sure you don't strip the screws. Or with a decent amount of pressure. Let me not say mightily. Now when you take this bearing out, what you're gonna find are a few pieces or a couple pieces. You have that uh, collar or washer there, the metal part, and then you have a bushing or an O-ring inside there as well. I like to call them all gaskets. They're all the same to me. You do wanna keep your screws separate so you don't mix them up. Some can look quite similar, but not the same. So just be careful of that when you're taking a real apart. Now we get to the top part and leave this part for last. I'm gonna take this, slip this up. Notice there's an O-ring on top there. It goes there, but it seats inside here in that little channel that you see under there to create the seal. So we have that. I don't always take this off. I'll take it off for you just so you see it. This one's a little tricky because you have to kind of open it up and pull up at the same time. Notice that there's a spring under there. We'll take that off as well. Now you notice on that spring, there's a raised end right there. That raised end will be facing up. So what you'll see is that larger part of the top is where the ring will sit and facing up that way. And this part obviously is facing down towards the pinion. Now we're gonna do those three screws on the outside there. Note the setup of the um, bearing retainer has a flat side facing this backup dog. This just pull straight up. Under there you'll find an O-ring as well. Uh, let's just take them all off so you can see them. Just be careful when you're taking them off. Sometimes they do get stuck like you see this one is. When that happens, I just go flat along the edge of the O-ring so it gently raises it up instead of pulling it up because then you can damage it. Now we can pull the stack out and the setup of this will be the pinion, remember that bushing's inside there, I'll remove it afterwards. You have the bearing that goes on the bottom, the anti reverse clutch, this cup with a bearing inside of it. Now we can undo those three screws around here for the rotor brake. I'm gonna do it, uh, but probably off camera. You can sometimes these things are glued on there, you'll have to kind of force it off. If it's not glued on, great. If it is, just kind of work it off when you put it back on. You do not need to glue it on, but you can if you want to. We're going to remove this backup dog, and the way we're going to do that is taking that E-clip off. I'm going to take my screwdriver, stick one end into the uh, E-clip, one of those gaps on the E-clip, and then twist, like so. Pull that straight up. You'll see that there's a spring under there that has one raised end. See better like that. And then one straight end. The straight end will be going against the housing. Now I'm gonna remove the crosswind gear and the bearing that's underneath there. The bearing underneath there will be the same kind of deal as the bearing in the side on the side cover. So I won't show you that part. There's a bushing inside there. 
that gold piece that comes out. You have a washer under there that just kind of helps with the rotation. And then you have this plate here that helps the crosswind block or helps guide it up and down. I'm not going to remove that on camera, but it's just two screws and then you pull it off. Just note the orientation of it. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll get this all cleaned up and come back to you guys. I'll tell you what I'll be using. Oh, let's go ahead and remove this part. And there's a reason why I do that. There's, an, uh, there's a gasket inside there as well. In any event, the way I will clean this stuff up is I will be using a lot of Q-tips. A lot of Q-tips. I can't stress that enough. There's a lot of Q-tips happening here. I buy tons of Q-tips every month. Uh, some Corrosion X to break down grease. I probably will not use it on this reel. I'm probably going to end up using the ultrasonic cleaner to break this stuff down. Uh, I use a toothbrush a lot. And I think that might be about it. If there's something I forgot, I'll tell you on the way back. Oh yeah, one thing. If you are going to use an ultrasonic cleaner, try to avoid using chemicals to break down the, the grease and whatever else you see that's on the reel. Just use Dawn or dish liquid and warm water. Sometimes you have to use the purple grease cleaner stuff uh, because you just can't get it off otherwise. But in general, just using dish soap and water will work. All right, see you guys in a bit. Welcome back. Uh, now you see that I've opened up these bearings and cleaned these things out and the covers I'm not gonna put back on. So all I'm gonna do with these just add oil to all of them and I use Relax but you can use whatever oil you want and sometimes you'll see me grease these bearings that go on the pinion and on the handle or the main gear today I'm just gonna add oil I will do one extra step on this line roller bearing but once I put oil in them I'm gonna work that oil in Just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot in terms of working it in there. And what I did forget to tell you earlier on is that I do also use a lot of paper towels, well not a lot, but I use paper towels as well to kind of wipe things off and out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add some, I'm gonna add oil to that hole right there. Let's take a little grease inside here where that uh, shaft bushing will go. And now we're going to take our pieces for the click spring. Let's put those together. This I'm going to put on top of this. Before I do that, I'll add some oil around it. I'm just going to drop it on here looking like that. And I personally like to do it this way, but if you have an easier way of doing it, you most certainly can do it that way. Stick everything through there. I'm going to take my screwdriver, add some grease to the tip of it, and if you want to know what grease I use, I use pen real grease. Kind of balance that like that, find a hole, and screw it in. You can screw it all the way down if you want, because we're not doing anything else to it. But now we're going to take our pick and rotate that spring over to that post. That post has like a little slot inside of it. You want to make sure that that spring is resting inside that slot. Of course you can test it out to make sure it works, but we know it does. Now for the drag washers, what we're going to use is Cal's Real Grease. And we're going to grease each one of these lightly. Now we're going to take our drag washer, notice it's keyed, we need to fill it, fill it inside those slots, push it down, one of our metal drag washers, drop down on top, and then just kind of follow the sequence. Now for the retaining spring, we need to make sure it fits inside the slot that's inside there, it's just above the the top metal drag washer. We're going to angle it down like this, put this end in first, and take our finger and just kind of work it around to put the rest in. 
when you get it all to the bottom, you want to make sure that it's in that slot that it should be in, which this one is. All right, now we're going to grease a few points on the rotor just to get that prepared. Don't ask me why I'm putting some here. The trip arm still slides up and down, so I guess that's why I'm doing it. Somewhere on that post, some up there in that channel. And then some on top of those screw holes where those screws are going to go. And the same thing for the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and do the line roller first. Add some grease around here. I do not use oil. Um, I rarely use oil. I don't think, yeah, I do actually use oil. I rarely use oil. Notice on that, there's two prongs that stick out. They're going to fit inside the channel right there where you see that those slots in the bail arm. While I have it in my hand, I'm going to add some grease to right there and around. Some around that point, some inside the hole, and some over that hole where that top part of that pivot is going to go, or that pivot arm. Since I did that, I'm going to do this one too. And I know I kind of jump around with these things. Uh, there's no real, well, there's a method or a structure, but you don't really need to follow it. The goal here is to make sure you get the, the parts that need to be greased and oiled. Done. That's it. Also hit some grease up on this side. And back to this. So first we're going to stick our bushing on there. Make sure we go all the way to the bottom. Take our line roller and we're going to add some grease inside of it. And even though that bushing is uh, plastic, sometimes you'll find that that can get stuck on here from the expansion of uh, corrosion and salt water. As I said before, don't forget that, that sloped end will be facing towards the bail wire, looking like that. Now we'll take our bearing and put that inside. But before we do that, we're going to add some grease around it to help protect it from salt water intrusion. And I'm doing it all over. Now I, I, I try to do a pretty thorough job of this because obviously if there's any little gap in that, uh, that grease, that's where the water will find a way to get in. So you want to be thorough with this one. Having a seal on there is not that helpful. I'm not saying it doesn't help at all. I'm saying it still finds a way in. Stick that bearing inside there like that. Now we're going to get our collar, stick that on there. Just like that. Now we're going to take this, put it on, and then rotate it until we feel it fall in place. This one fell in place right away, but let's say it was over here. If you're rotating it, you'll feel it drop and kind of lock in place. You could add some grease to that. I'm not going to add some grease to the tip, and there'll be some residual passing through as we go uh, or screwing this in. And I'm going to screw this pretty much all the way down to the bottom. Make sure it's still there. And I'm not going to tighten it. I'm going to leave that little bit of play in there for now, even though that will still stay there at the end. And now I'm going to jump to the to this side where we're going to put our trip arm and the spring assembly in. I do still grease this. I definitely grease this portion of it. This has a tendency to just wear unevenly. And that's not because it's bad, it's just because of the kind of metal that they use. Put some on the tip. Then we're going to set this up. Put the trip arm in first. That long end will be facing down, looking just like that. Make sure that's all the way to the top. And I don't build, I don't, uh, I don't grease the bail spring, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Rest that in there. Make sure that spring goes all the way down to the bottom, just like that. And there's a little bit of load on there. Not enough for it to go shooting somewhere, but there's some on there. I'm going to cover this up and secure, secure, secure the cover with this screw. I don't go all the way down to the bottom. I leave a little bit of play in that arm, I'm sorry, that cover, just in case I need it when I'm doing this part. Now I'm going to take that hole, put it over this piece. 
at an angle, kind of rotate as I push down. When I get to the bottom, I want to make sure I feel that that's secure. Now we're going to secure it with the screw. We'll do one double check on the trip arm just for you guys so you can see it. Let's make sure we go ahead and screw this cover down so there's no play in the trip in the bill spring. And now we just take this and see that the trip arm moves. While we're here, let's go ahead and grease some places. Here where that o-ring goes, on those holes where those screws will go in. And on the bottom here where that bottom o-ring will go, as well as the inside. That works. For this side, we're gonna take it sideways, put it on there, rotate it down, and then secure it with the screw. Make sure this is snug, it is. Now we're gonna tighten this line roller down. I'll make sure that it works. In this one, I can certainly use a Q-tip and it should tell me if it's working, which as you can see it is. Test the bill flip one time, just to make sure it's good. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do on the housing will be to add two bearings so I can get them in there because if you don't put them in and put the crosswind gear on it, you have to remove stuff to get them in. I just don't want to do that or make that mistake. So, put a light amount of grease inside here. Very light. Same for this side. I'm going to leave that bearing cover off, which is this piece here, until the very end. Now I could add some grease to those holes around there. I'm going to add oil instead. Now we're gonna go ahead and grease this cup or these cups. And everything you see me doing here is kind of just a light, a light amount of crease. Just adding some layer of protection to it is all we're doing. First thing that will be going in will be this uh, gasket here. Notice that there's an indentation or a ridged part of the bottom. That ridge part will be facing down. So I'm going to stick that in. You want to make sure it's resting on top of that shoulder that's inside there. So a little bit of precision, precision is needed. Take this, stick that over it with the cup side or that opening side facing down toward that gasket. Check it and make sure that it went through properly, which we can see that it did. Everything is set up the way it should look is just like that. Take our bearings, stick that in, and then we're going to secure these uh, screws to lock that in place. And you're not going to over tighten these screws, but we're going to snug them down pretty decently. And it'll be the same thing for the other side. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our handle out of the way. You didn't see me take it apart, uh, but I will show you how to put it back together. And obviously taking it apart will be that in reverse. Only a couple of pieces there. One thing to note here is that you can open this up. Uh, if you stick this pick inside of it, you can pop that out, clean inside there and re-add grease or oil in there. I'm going to use some oil just around that spot right there. Stick this back on there. And I'm also going to add some oil right there. Go ahead and work that in. That's good enough. Grease inside here. Add a little bit of grease to that hole where the pivot screw will be going through. Grease this inside the hole as well. Stick that in flat side looking like that. And we're going to add some grease to the tip and to the rest of the screw as well. Just like that.
stick it through. Sometimes you gotta play with this, this collar right here to kind of move it in. And then just secure it. Final step, we add some grease to the threads here. And maybe some around there as well. All right, now we're gonna do the upper area first, including the pinion stack. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of grease, just kind of around here where that, that brake sits. You don't need to do this. Um, just kind of like to have some protection there. Now I'm gonna stick a generous amount of grease inside here where that pinion stack goes. We don't want that getting frozen in there. So we're gonna make sure we get a good amount. Now you can either add some grease to these holes or some oil. I'm gonna add oil. And now we're gonna work on the pinion gear. I won't show you all the greasing for the gears, but I will show you this one and you can use it as an example. I'll kind of walk you through the other gears. Uh, I'm gonna put a moderate amount of grease, not too light and not too much. So you can lightly see the, the grease on there. Some reels just do better with a little bit of grease than just a, a very light coat. This uh, just happens to be one of those. Now, I'm not saying to over grease it, I'm just saying that don't put too little. I'm also greasing these threads right here. And now the first thing, we're, well, hold on, before we do that, we're gonna add some oil to this because I did clean this out as well. Uh, and once you clean it out, you wanna re-add a few drops of oil. I'm gonna probably add five drops of oil. And obviously you see me rotating this as I do that just to kind of get the individual threads or sort of individual cylinders oiled. Stick the inner race in, rotate that to kind of work that oil inside. And if you slip this out, what you should see is a very light coat on, on that inner race, which is what I see there. Leave that intact. We're gonna take uh, this rotor brake, drop that on first and secure up the three screws, and it can only go on one way. So looking like that. Then we'll secure with the screws. And just get them done on there. You don't need to over tighten these things. Now we're gonna finish up re-greasing or greasing these other parts. And that was a little bit much. Uh, we're just putting a light coat on these things to protect them also. For this one where that spring goes, I do grease that channel where the spring is going to sit. Let's go ahead and stick this bushing back in there. Like so. Take our first bearing, drop that on. Take our anti reverse clutch, stick that on there. Put a bearing inside this cup and drop that cup over it. Looking just like that. Once we're there, I'm gonna pinch this together and add some grease around these two pieces that weren't greased on the outside. Drop it in place. We're gonna rotate this until that anti-reverse clutch, which is kind of keyed, falls in place and then push it down. Now we can go ahead and cover it up. This part will be facing down. We're gonna take our O-ring, put that over it, just like that. Drop that part over there looking just like that. And then securing it with the three screws here. Snug them down. And now we can work on the anti reverse or the backup anti reverse dock. I'm going to take some oil out along the shaft, just like that. Take our spring, as I said earlier, that raised end like that will be facing up towards the rotor and the flat side of the spring will be facing or against the housing, just like that. Now I'm gonna take this, that little point there will be facing up so that that piece can go around it. And 
that spring needs to fit inside that little slot right there on the arm. You don't want to go too low because there's a post on the bottom there that needs to go over this ridge so it stays in the area that it needs to be in. So I get it over it first, then I drop it in place so it's secure. Make sure that spring fits inside the slot. And now we can see it works properly. It doesn't flail out like it wants to go all over the place. Take our e-clip and just put that back on there. I like to use the flathead screwdriver a lot for these things. So you'll see me typically just put it on top of the uh, on top of that for support and then just push it over. Make sure it's on there. And now we're good. Now we'll get to this part. First thing we're gonna do is put that spring on there, which is this. Remember that will be facing up. I'll show it to you after we put it on there. There's a little slot towards the top, the very uh, very top of this part right here that you want to fit this inside of. You want to make sure it gets all the way down there. Make sure it goes inside the slot. And that's kind of how it will look. And I'm hoping you guys can see that. Now we can take this piece. Stick that on there. We're going to have that raised piece of the spring go through that slot that's right there on that arm. Where'd it go? And it'll look, the end or net result will look just like that. Now we can stick this with that side facing down. Getting the point or post on top of that backup dog in there and leaving it looking just like that. You can go ahead and add that o ring around the top of this. And now you're looking good. Now we're going to take our rotor, drop that over it, rotate that until it's, it goes through the slot because this is uh, keyed also, the rotor is. And now we're going to secure it. First thing we're going to put on would be this o-ring here. That's the top one. We want to make sure that that's flush inside that channel that it should be in. Which it is. Now we're going to take the nut, secure it. And I'm going to kind of want to get either the flat sides or one of those or one of the points on the nut to be around the hole. You can see there. The reason I went as far as I did is because it wasn't tight or snug yet. If it gets snug at the flat sides, then that's what you do. But this one, we'll see that fits properly enough over it so I can secure it. We're not going to do that yet. So now we'll take this, that, you see the indentation in there? That'll go over that little raised end on the nut. Like that and then putting this over it and securing it with the screws. And don't, you can snug these down slightly, but don't over tighten them. Maybe you're going into some sort of plastic piece there, so you don't want to smush that out or expand it. All right, now for the inside of the reel, I'm gonna take some grease, add around there, around that post, on the top, some in this channel right here, some along there and definitely some along where that gasket is gonna go. Now for this, I'm gonna add oil to the holes where the screws are gonna go. And then for the other holes, I'm gonna add grease. If you wanted to, you could just add grease to all of them or oil to all of them. The goal here is to protect them, obviously. So whatever way you wanna use or method you wanna use, it should be fine. Now this is the part where I'm gonna go ahead and grease these three pieces right here. I'm gonna take this piece and secure it. Uh, what I can tell you about this is that I'll add some grease inside there where the handle interacts with the gear. And 
I'll add a little extra grease inside there in that little channel as well as some on top of that post or a little extra on top of that post. Now before we move forward we're gonna go ahead and lay this in and the way I like to do it is I like to start at the top and then work my way down and I do use this little small flathead screwdriver to kind of help me. Well basically I use whatever I need to use to get it to work. <laughs> Uh, the funny thing is about these things, it's not that funny actually, is that when you take these things out, sometimes you may just need to put a new one in because it just doesn't reset properly. Especially if it wasn't put on properly in the first place. We can see that's not the case with this one. So that looks good. You can use that tab as a key. I start up here, lay this side out first. And then just kind of let it drift or drip down to the bottom. All right, so now I'm going to grease these things up, like I said, and then come back to you after these are all greased up and show where they go or what order they go in. So the first thing we're going to put on will be this little Teflon piece. I'm going to just kind of put that around it looking like that. Then we can drop this over it. Rotate that towards the bottom, kind of that area right there. Now I'm going to take this bushing, kind of fit that in there, looking like that. And now we're going to secure it with the screw. I'm going to snug it down, but push down as you do that. That's a weak screw as well. Just added some grease around it. Let me do it so you guys can see it. And now we're going to take this bar before we forget it. Put that on looking like that. I'll add some oil to these holes as well. Then secure it with the screws. I like to get both screws in there. Pretty much for anything, I like to get all the screws in before snugging anything down so it doesn't offset or tilt the bar that I'm or something that I'm connecting. Alright, so now we'll take this block, that slot will go over that post right there, and we're going to kind of angle it in to get it to seat. Make sure it's close to the bottom. Now we can take this, drop that over it, looking just like that. Take our our shaft here, add some grease to the bottom. That's where it's going to interact with the block. You can put some at the top here, inside right there. And I think that's all we would do for this. Stick that through. Support the block as you push this in. The flat sides will be facing up towards the sky, like that. And then we can secure it with the screws. A little bit of coverage for protection. Now we'll take our two washers that this came with, put those back on there. Note that I still have this off. I'm not putting that on yet. I'm going to cover this up and then secure it. Make sure that gasket's in the right place before you do that. Now we'll secure it with the screws. So now what you're going to see me do, or what I will do likely off camera, is secure the four screws plus the bottom strip. Snug them down. And while I put this bottom strip on, I'll let you know why I didn't put this um, bearing cover on. It's because, or before I do that, let me add some grease to the bottom right there, where I'm going to put that screw in. And you can grease the entire thing if you wanted to. The reason is, is because the um, that creates a vacuum and it can hinder the the feel or affect the feel of the gears so I want to have as much let's use the word setting as possible having everything just kind of relax and fall in place like it should versus being pushed up artificially by some sort of uh, pressure or vacuum lightly snug that down don't go too hard now we can take this put that on there 
just kind of get it started. I took it out of there, but we're just gonna kind of get that started so that when we screw this on, it'll push it all the way down. To where it sets in place. Now we can take this handle, secure it, and test this reload after we put the, the spool on there. Because we're gonna test the we're gonna test the, the drags first. I'm gonna add some grease to the top part, right there, where the drag knob goes over it. We've already tested the line roller, so we know that works. Drag feels like it works very well. Let's see if we can get us out of there without getting in trouble. And let's feel the crank. Feels nice. There's no bail flip to worry about. The anti-reverse works nicely. So we're in business. Alright guys, if you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, spread the word about it.